feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp tank. Welcome, everyone, to a special episode of the Central Pennsylvania Shrimp Tank, a series we are calling In the Crosshairs of Corona. And I'm your host, Nathan Imboden, today. And normally on this podcast, we get to interview some of the best and brightest business leaders and entrepreneurs in the Central Pennsylvania region, really telling the story of how they started, grew, and are now running their business but right now, we're in the midst of the coronavirus crisis, which is really putting a major strain on a lot of small businesses in our area between the stay-at-home orders, the shutdown of operations, the discrepancies between what is a life-sustaining and non-life-sustaining business. It's really put a lot of pressure on our local small businesses and entrepreneurs. So we wanted to create a series where we could let their voice be heard a little bit where we could find out what's impacting them, how they're trying to manage through this, uh, some of the issues that they're facing through a lot of these orders. And so that's what we're going to do. So today on our show, we have John Gilliland, who is the founder and owner of a company called Investment Real Estate LLC. And they do work in the self-storage space. Now, their work really spans uh, a lot from actually managing, owning and managing self-storage units to selling and brokering those units. So they've got a unique perspective because they have multiple business lines. And John was a previous guest on our show, so we're, we're glad to have him here again so he can share a little bit of an update on, on what he's doing. So John, welcome to the show. Why don't you give us just a little bit of a background on how all of this here in the last four to six weeks has impacted your business and your operation. All right. Thanks, Nathan. Good to be back. Um, just I'll start off in saying that we're very grateful to be in the self storage business uh, during this uh, during this crisis. Um, I have lots of friends that are in the car dealership business, that are in the restaurant business, you know, et cetera, et cetera, construction business, and uh, they're virtually shut down, and it's uh, it's been a tough uh, road for them to hoe here. So we're we're glad to be in the self storage business. Uh, fortunately, uh, self storage is actually one of the life sustaining businesses in Pennsylvania. We're under the storage and warehousing um, uh, classification, and so also in the other states where we operate, uh, Maryland, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, Massachusetts. It's, uh, we're deemed an essential business. So that's been okay for us. We can still operate. About five years ago, and, and luckily so, we actually put in the systems and processes that we can do 100% of our business online. And so now our big job is to get that word out to everybody that we can have contactless rentals and, and do business, you know, 100% online. So that's been good. Now, to protect our people about three and a half weeks ago, in fact, um, uh, I guess as Governor Wolf gave the order to close uh, any non-essential businesses, even though we were essential, we actually chose to close all of our offices, all of our self, and this is for the self-storage rental business. So these are offices on, on site where we're renting self-storage units. We closed those. Uh, put lots of signage up, and we can talk about that a little bit marketing-wise. Um, but we loaded TeamViewer software on all of our managers' home computers, or if they didn't have a home computer that was suitable, we gave them a laptop. They all had corporate cell phones. So they're running their business from their living room or from their kitchen table on their computer with their cell phone, and they can log right into our computer at the store and do all the business they can do as if they were in the store. And then they visit uh, uh, the property uh, anywhere from two to three times per week, process the mail, make the deposits, check the units to make sure everything's uh, uh, well on site. And if they do encounter another person, obviously we keep our social distance and, and making sure we follow the protocols that we have in place. So from a self-storage standpoint, uh, renting of the self-storage standpoint, that hasn't been impacted as much uh, as a lot of other businesses today. So it was, it was more of just uh, getting comfortable with a new operational normal, it sounds like. You didn't have to worry about laying people off or um, going through any, any of those hardships that you mentioned some of your folks in the auto industry or the construction industry at this point have had to deal with? That's correct. So we've chose, uh, we, we probably could have made an argument, you know, to, to lay off some people or to limit hours for some of our employees. We chose actually to go and do go the other way. We've actually looking to hire a couple of people right now, as our business is growing on the on the development and uh, new acquisition side. 
uh, we've taken this um, opportunity. There's lots of people that uh, that need or want to sell in this kind of market, believe it or not. And so we've actually done four transactions uh, in the last four weeks. It's, it's just been it's just been kind of crazy good on, on that side of things. So we didn't want to lay anybody off. So we've kept everybody on uh, on the payroll, and uh, uh, everybody's been very very appreciative of that. And they're working really hard to make sure that uh, our business is affected as little as possible. That's great. That's great. I know, I think I actually saw you at your company had posted a job listing on LinkedIn at one point in time, which I thought was, uh, was interesting. So yeah, that, that's good. Uh, so you had, um, you had mentioned, and I want to talk about how you've, you know, creative things you've had to do to adapt to all this. And you mentioned you've had the capabilities to be able to do stuff remotely before, but I imagine most of the stuff you were doing was probably face to face, um, as, as much as you could. Now it's being forced more virtually, but um, maybe touch on that a little bit. And then what else have you had to do to be able to be creative and adapt to this, what, what kind of coding new normal? Yeah. So uh, up until uh, a month ago, probably 30, 35% of our rentals happened online. And we you know without the involvement of the manager uh, that now is, you know, uh, Virtually all of our rentals at this point in time are done online. A lot of times with a manager on the phone, with the customer on their computer or on their cell phone as well, walking them through the process. Um, but it's all happening, you know, virtually today. So, um, uh, and then of course our home office is also closed and everybody is working remotely. We do have kind of shifts, you know, three to four people out of the 15 or so that are in the home office uh, will come in and, uh, you know, do mail deposits, you know, uh, processing bills, that sort of thing. Uh, so all the accountants took home their computers and their printers and, and blank checks so they can write checks and, and get those mailed out and keep up with our bills and, and what have you. So we, we've done that. Um, the, again, the biggest issue for us is letting the public know that we are in fact open for business. So we've done a big signage campaign. Well, it's all over our website, uh, all over social media. We're sending out emails uh, twice weekly to everybody on our in our database um, that has either been a self-storage customer with us in the past or has an inquired about storage or is a current customer. So we're getting the word out that we are available for sale um, or are available to rent. And so we, um, uh, we put a bunch of signs up and we had some fun with them. And one of them says, store your toilet paper here, you know, uh, call us or, or, or text us. We can work uh, online and, and in a contactless manner. So we've had some great uh, uh, feedback about, you know, some of that signage and stuff. I, I wanted to say, you know, store your husband here, but that one didn't pass muster. So uh, um, I, was, I was overruled by the, by the level-headed uh, leadership team. So that's good. But uh, um, actually, a lot of people are sitting home these days, and, and, they're, and they don't know what to do, so they're spring cleaning, right? They're cleaning out the closets and the garage, and all of a sudden, they have all this stuff, and they're like, oh, my goodness, I need a storage unit. And so when they find out we're open, uh, that's been a great source for us for, uh, for new business. Um, if you want to talk about the brokerage side, that's been impacted a little more, whereas uh, – we have uh, a number of transactions. We actually had a significant amount of, uh, of, of, of revenue uh, for transactions, you know, which would be five, six hundred thousand dollars of commission revenue got pushed about 60 days, most of which is because we, the, the township offices are closed, the municipality offices are closed. So we were waiting for, you know, land development plans to be recorded, for lot line adjustments to be recorded, for building plans or building permits to be issued. And if we can't issue a building permit, that was a, you know, a condition of the sale. And so we can't get that done. So that deal's had to push. Uh, in a couple of cases, we've had bankers that have had to push the timeline, not because they don't have the money to lend, because the bankers all had to pull their resources and do the PPP loans. Right. And so we've had a number of bankers that said, look, we need an extra 15 or 30 days to get the loan done for you, uh, you know, for the buyer of the self-storage facility uh, because of the situation that we're in. So luckily, knock on wood, we've not lost any deals through this. That, and that's my big worry. It's just we've delayed some of those. Okay. Well, that's good. I mean, that's a, like you said, luckily, and, and I would say a marginal impact in that regard. So let's talk a little bit uh, here on, because I want to try to, push out some message of either hope or creativity as well. Uh, we know there's a lot of, of negative impact that organizations are going through, but you mentioned some of the creative things you were trying to do from a marketing standpoint. Personally, if I was on your leadership team, I would have voted yes for because <laughs> that, I think it's catchy. It's great. It's, you know, it would have, 
it would have drawn eyes to the uh, to the organization. But uh, probably <laughs> probably wise to step up <laughs> that a little bit. But have you seen other organizations being creative and adapting as well? And maybe any any examples that uh, organizations have tried to use this as an opportunity to shine in this time. Well, um, I, I think so. So one of the things that we've done and, 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 and I, I really learned this when I went through the recession, you know, 10 years ago, and that is that we, we've really kind of made sure that the communities that we are in, that we are a part of kind of rally around each other. And we talk all the time now. So I have a community locally with my Vistage group, you know, which is a CEO peer group here. And John Dame is leading that effort. We have uh, twice weekly phone calls with, with, that, with that group and talk about what each of us are doing and how we're surviving and, and helpful hints and sharing, you know, protocols, safety protocols that we need to have in place, for instance, when we, when we do, in fact, go back to work or when our people do visit a site, uh, you know, because they're essential. So that's been helpful in sharing. We also have those same groups in the self-storage industry there's 58 of us that are on a phone call once a week that are really the 58 of the top 100 operators in the country. And we all get on a phone call and say, hey, what are we doing with this? What are we doing with that? So um, there's been some creative uh, uh, you know, ideas that have come across you know, those various forums on uh, you know, how to handle this. Um, I, you know, communication, I, you know, I, I take time every week to call through all of our employees. I mean, we're small enough where we're just right at, right at 50 employees. So I can talk to each of those employees over a day's time or so personally and say, hey, how you doing? Um, I know how they're doing work-wise because we have those metrics and you know, everything, the systems are all still in place. But I just want to know from a personal level, how are you doing? And so I think this is a great opportunity to build culture. You know, as a company leader, we need to be thinking about our people and, 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 and how this is affecting them on a personal level. And just the fact that you, that you can pick up the phone and talk to them for two or three or five minutes just makes all the difference in the world. And they really appreciate that. I've gotten lots of nice messages. And so uh, this is a great opportunity to build that culture, uh, I think, going forward. And so when we come out of this, which I think is going to be fairly soon, by the way, we're making plans to, to have people back in the stores here within the next week or two. Mm -hmm. um, and so that way we're fully up and running, uh, you, know, uh, you know, at the stores here by May 1st. Um, I, I just think... Um, um, you know, let's let's look at the silver lining of this pandemic, and if we can have a stronger, um, better operating organization because of it, let's let's take that and run with it. Mm, that's great. Uh, that, that, that's great. So having that peer group around you is unbelievably uh, helpful and beneficial. But I know I've had a few conversations with people on a personal side where they've said these last three or four weeks they've had more family dinners or walks with their kids or whatever than they've had in years and you mentioned silver lining in a way I think we can look at that as a silver lining on maybe getting us a little bit back to, to some of the things that are really important and especially you having been able to step back and just deal with your employees check in with them let them know hey we care about you we're here we want to make sure you're safe you're comfortable we'll get through this um, it's great leading through a crisis and so good on you for that John I appreciate appreciate knowing that yeah, well, thank you. So we've had an adjustment at home. I, we were empty nesters for six months. Our, our youngest went off to college in uh, August last year to Penn State. And guess what? Now we have two back. So my youngest is back from college with his classroom now in front of a uh, computer down in the basement. And my oldest son, who works in the uh, retail uh, world in State College in the retail business, uh, he's, he's now uh, – back on the payroll, so to speak. Uh, he's working for our construction company um, as we go out and do maintenance and what have you, which again is allowed per the current rules, but uh, he's laid off from his retail job. So now I got two at home, at home again. So that's been a little bit of adjustment, but family dinners, Easter dinner, it was all wonderful and we're all making the best of it. And lots of uh, group FaceTimes. I've learned how to group FaceTime now and in Zoom meetings with the family members. So uh, uh, it's all good. Awesome. Very good. Well, John, thank you for, for being a part of this special episode and, and just giving some insight into what your business has, has been going through and some of your peers. Uh, if you have not seen uh, or listened to John's entire episode, go to our website, shrimptankpodcast.com slash Central PA or go to the Central PA Shrimp Tank app to download the podcast, listen to John, uh, specifically a lot of his messages about managing through the, the great uh, financial crisis back in 2007, 8, and 9, 
and then uh, just all the lessons he learned and, and has developed to get him to the point that he is today. So, John, again, I want to thank you for, for taking time to be on with us. And uh, everybody at home, stay safe, be well. We'll see you on a, an upcoming episode of, again, what we're calling In the Crosshairs of Corona. See you next week. I've been feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp tank.